When I launch Bryce, it looks like this, and the reason for that is I've set up a default file that Bryce goes and looks for and loads in, so that it's set up to my preferences. If I use the keyboard shortcut 2 and the overhead view, you can see that I've got the camera position down here. If you launch Bryce and you don't have this default file set up, there is a tutorial that shows you how to set the default file up. It probably is going to look something like this. And that is a perspective camera and we're viewing from the director's view. Keyboard shortcut 2 will show you that the camera is here. It really wants to be down here to take advantage of the orientation of the terrains in the terrain editor when you edit terrains and also for the sun rollerball which is orientated north south east west as this now is this uh, grid represents the infinite plane and i'm not using that in this render and i also want switch to the camera view a fairly wide field of view which can be expanded using that but it's difficult to tell what's going on without anything to give you any context so let us create a terrain in the default gray you do that by holding out the control key and now you can see when you modify the field of view the field of view changing i suppose i should have done that the other way around but never mind so there you go, default grey terrain. I'm going to edit that terrain. First thing I'm going to do is set it to solid because I'm going to apply a bumpy material to it. Use new to create an empty canvas. Invert to raise that to maximum height and then this allows me to paint in height map. So if I set that right down there, I'll be painting a trench. If I set the paint flow to one dot, the edges are already softened and that's the size of my brush. I can control the depth at which I'm digging into this surface and then and also the size so I'm going to do a sort of vague cut and then increase the brush size and do more of a like an end shape maybe with a little island in the middle there I can uh, then filter that with eroded so it looks like it's been weathered with rain uh, mounds will add bumps into it eroded weather it again if I want a little bit of mounds then I can hold the mouse key down and control the level by sliding the mouse left and right you have one level of undo when you're in the train editor and that's through control Z this button doesn't work if you want multiple levels of undo you have to keep going in and out of the train editor to achieve that so if I like the look of this and I think I might do mounds again and then uh, I can always use the brush to cut a bit more away if I, f I feel it's getting too filled in and then eroded will tend to lift things up again mounds add more detail and erode you can go on like this for, for a long time there's uh, no stopping you but at some point you have to decide you've got enough to work with so we'll say that's it then I'll go out and I'll enlarge this terrain so the camera's now in the terrain and uh, use this little zoom control here to zoom out I'm going to position the camera off to one side so more of the train's going to be in front of me uh, rotate it and move it across and let's have a look at that view so what I want to do is try and get to some where, where it looks like we're faced with some kind of large canyon for example and then I can apply an appropriate material to it and then we can look at the lighting implications so I lift the camera up so we could be on a cam canyon wall and point the camera down so we could be looking into a valley perhaps and you can see in the default settings this this as all looks so it looks okay but it doesn't look very realistic so the answer to that is to provide better lighting and possibly you know more realistic materials so we'll start with material we'll go into the material lab for this terrain into the material library select terrains uh, rocky and we'll have this Martian strata because it's a very simple material and I can also I'm going to turn the ambient control up here just to show you what ambient does because this is important for when we have better lighting so the sky I'm going to choose, uh, daytime, is going to be this Utah blue. Right, so I've changed the sky, changed the material on the terrain, and now we can see a little bit of the horizon there because it's very bright. So I'll reposition the camera so it just covers that hole up in the background. There we go. So the horizon's now lost to sight, that's fine. Move the camera over here forward a bit and uh, this area is in shadow but it's still lit and it's being lit through the ambient channel I can show you that by making that bright colour there so even if I turn the sun off now disable the sunlight the terrain is still being lit through ambient and that was a 
process that was created for slower computers and is no longer necessary now so you can either get rid of the ambient here the global ambient but if you need that for a special effect for example so suppose you have to have that then you can always modify the material so that it has no ambient output and I aim with the sun turned off now and the ambient turned off is to make sure we're getting no light here this can also provide light the sky dome color I'll make that green you can see that's lighting things but again that's not very good light it acts in a very basic way it doesn't cast shadows it only lights up from above so I'm gonna set that to fully black just check that is set fully black by holding the alt key down and clicking on it so we've got some fog here perhaps no that's set to zero we've got some haze the haze intensity can add into your scene if you turn it up but again that's only adding a sort of very crude kind of haze depth effect and it's not high quality lighting so I'll hold the alt key down click on haze we'll switch the haze off for us and just check back in the Skylab and make sure the Sun and Moon shadows are set at 100 right what I want to do is provide light on this terrain now from the sky to do that Skylab image based lighting use HDR image use Skydome only and I can use this sky that bright patch there is the Sun I'll just render this in scene so you can see the effect not very bright at the moment turn the HDRI effect up and we can get some light in turn the quality down it'll speed the render up and produce 16 simulated light sources instead of the default which is 256 which takes a while to render so we'll just turn that down and you can see we're getting light in this scene and the saturation the colors coming from the blue but we've also got this bright patch in the sky because the Sun was visible in the sky if we turn the Sun visible off in the sky and regenerate this sky dome it looks a lot darker now and we can now bring the effect up and you can see this much bluer tint automatically when you create a HDRI image it disables the sunlight because it's assuming not unreasonably that you might have wanted the sun as part of the sky or you can go back and add the sun in by re-enabling it by clicking that control there also you have this true ambience optimization set which means if you go into the render options and switch on premium effects we'll turn it down to four rays per pixel for previewing turn on true ambience true ambience scatter correction boost light will bring more of the color through but at the risk of creating noise lower the maximum ray depth to four will improve render time uh, because it's related to the light gathering method if we render now you can see oh it's all looking a bit bright so let's make sure this isn't turned up so quite so high so we'll say 50 we don't get a reasonable preview here unfortunately you can only really see that in the scene there when you render or in the accurate rendering in the preview so this now is true ambience lighting that's being gathered from the sky and this will give very good quality light simulation particularly if we provide some direct light into our scene now and we'll increase the intensity of that that can also interact so move the Sun around so that it's just clipping we've got a good re area of set shadow then but the Sun arriving on this face here quite brightly then that light will be scattered by being gathered from this surface so it will appear to be scattered from there but it'll actually be this surface looking at that uh, where it's receiving the light We'll, we'll start filling in some details down here so you've got a mix of blue light and then direct light from the Sun and then light that's gathered from that that's directly lit on this surface so this creates a much more advanced form of light simulation that to uh, the, the eye because we're used to seeing this kind of uh, thing in our everyday environment looks much more realistic we can reintroduce haze and that will also act as a light source probably not as strong as that because that's really rather a lot of haze if it's if it's introduced subtly and raise it up so it's filling more of the sky then that will as long as it's not too strong aid to the illusion that you're looking at something very large in this case because you get a color perspective where certain colors at the red end of the spectrum are being absorbed by the atmosphere and you see more blues and as things go into the distance so that can help too uh, the best effects generally achieved when the sun's quite low in the horizon or, and, and it's able to clip the sides of the 
terrain and uh, that that will show more detail in the forms of the terrain but you don't want too much direct sun to fall on your scene because you want to take advantage of the advanced lighting provided by Trambian. so it's getting a mixture of direct light hitting your scene and true ambience light that's being generated through the light gathering method so you can uh, you can see some of the some of your scenes being lit directly and you get the impact of having the high contrast and a proportion of your scenes being lit indirectly and it's taken advantage of the advanced lighting method to show off uh, the good shadow simulation that you get when using Trambians and the transfer of light from bright surfaces like this one to darker surfaces like this one and the subtle transference of the colour from here to here as well as the you know, obviously the tinting blue mixture from the sky so that's the general idea behind using Trambians it's not the fastest render method but it can if used uh, in the correct environment work very well to create the illusion so so you can see that it's not terribly high contrast this scene we're not going to fully black so you know, we might want to either increase the amount of light arriving from the sun or decrease the amount of light arriving from the sky to in to create more contrast across the scene because that in turn will lead you to interpret this as receiving more light so you get a more exaggerated effect which can make it look a bit more realistic in, in my view so I really push the sun intensity up now and we've got this area a bit darker but we've still got information in here and that makes all the difference if this was just flat like like it was when uh, you have the default sky then you immediately recognize you're not seeing something very realistic it's the very subtle hints that you get from this that uh, make all the difference now I've managed to get it so that you can just see there's some bright, sort of bright orange pixels here and these are parts of this geometry that's actually seeing the very bright light here uh, but when it's doing its light gathering it's gathering it from all directions that are available to that piece of the surface there which is where the noise gets introduced so that that's the the noise element what I'd like to achieve then if I can is to eliminate the noise so I've gone below the gone below the surface of the train I'm trying to get the camera down because that's going to help with create the illusion of, of uh, scale if I tilt the camera back and get more sky in that's going to render a bit quickly well, well a bit more quickly I suppose I should say if I get more ground in then obviously it's working harder because it's like looking at, at more geometry to determine what lights there but obviously we're seeing more details down here with a fairly noisy material such as this is anyway with these um, bands on these bumpy bands you can get away when you want to render your final image with uh, less than the full rays per pixel if this was a very smooth like we've gone for default gray for whatever reason then you would need very high rays per pixel to hide the noise which is quite evident here and noise is also a product of having boost lights set while we're at it I suppose well, we could consider whether we want soft shadows on this edge or not I mean it may not be pr appropriate depending how far we are away from this surface if because the softer the shadows are the the closer it's going to seem like to the surface so if I was to just dabble with say soft shadows of five and uh, as I say it's the, it's the subtleties that make all the difference when it comes to trying to make things look realistic then uh, that in turn will tell us something about how far away we are from this edge so you can see now or just a slight softening of that shadow now sort of brings us a bit closer to this rock so I've shrunk the scale of this canyon a little bit but then again you've got to look at the banding on the rock to see what is an appropriate scale because obviously over a certain size you start to lose detail the other thing we can do now we're getting close to the final render is increase the resolution of the train so you don't see these triangles so edit and set to massive resolution check out I didn't need to do anything else it'll have automatically filtered it and now it'll have reduced it, the presence of those visible triangles if this is going to take a long time to render I suppose I could also consider reducing the resolution of this scene 
but we'll see what it's uh, like if we set it up to 64 rays per pixel which should be reasonable okay you can see that it's uh, it's going to take a little while at least by the progress of this first pass and we'll get a preview of the render time here so that's uh, 48 minutes 50 minutes I think that's reasonable render time I'll just render a small area to see how that's going to look and I think that's going to be okay I'm not seeing too much noise so I'll call that it and we'll see how the final render looks in uh, in about an hour's time here is a completed render and one thing I did forget before when you use a new document it resets the priority from high to normal and you have to reset it back to high again. If you use a multi-core processor as I do then high priority gives you the best rendering efficiency in terms of time although of course it does work your processor very hard and eventually destroys power supply units and motherboards. I've discovered that uh, you kill about one power supply unit every year and doesn't matter whether I buy expensive ones or cheap ones they die about the same rate. With motherboards of more or less reckon on getting high quality motherboards capable of overclocking it does seem to me they have uprated components on them and they last a bit longer if I do that because uh, rendering a high priority gives them 100% com processor usage and the design spec is usually around 80% particularly for now overclockers look at that for when they're for the heat distribution in the units so uh, rendering is probably about the worst thing you can do to a computer if you're doing it over you know, days and days, which does tend to happen with more complex renders. Anyway, a digression. Here's the final render, and you can see here and here there's, there's very high quality light simulation. You get a different impression of, of the shape of this uh, terrain, even though we're in an area where there's no direct lighting. And we've also you can see a sort of an orangey tint along this edge that's as a result of this bright, uh, brightly lit area here being seen by this part of the terrain and here it's quite orangey whereas here we're looking more bluey because this part of the terrain seeing more of the sky so in terms of light simulation this is probably the best quality light simulation you can achieve in Bryce um, out of the box as it were and the drawback being of course render time and noise but noise can be overcome by using a fairly noisy texture anyway and I didn't have to render this at the highest quality setting for the race per pixel so I think this is a, it's a, it's a very good light simulation maybe not necessary to use this in, in many situations in landscapes HDRI lighting is also very good but this gives a different quality of lighting and it's uh, it's a method you, you should be aware of if you, if you really want to push the realism in Bryce so I hope that was an interesting tutorial and uh, you'll go on to experiment with this feature